at its core, absolute value is a pretty easy concept. And I know a lot of you guys have found this on the IXL program and just kind of checked it out. This is basically all that IXL program provides for you for absolute value is how far it is away from zero. That's what it is. We're going to get a little bit more complex than the, just these two situations here. Uh, first of all, the absolute value is how far a number is away from zero. So for instance, um, how far is three away from zero? It's three away from zero. How far is negative five away from zero? It is five spaces away. This is always displayed uh, with a positive amount every time. How far away from zero is always displayed with a positive amount. Uh, and the symbols for absolute value uh, are just two straight up and down solid lines. Uh, so this is what we're going to be working with pushing forward here. But again, remember the concept, it's how far it's away from zero and it's always displayed in a positive no matter what. Now absolute value in a problem um, actually kind of acts like parentheses. Meaning, if you have an actual problem in the absolute value, you do the problem and then you take the distance from zero. So for example, if I have a problem like negative 5 plus 2 and it's an absolute value, we do what's inside the absolute value symbols first. So in this case, negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Now we take the absolute value of negative 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is just 3, because negative 3 is 3 away from 0. So these kind of act like parentheses. The other thing that you will probably see accompanying absolute value problems are an assortment of negatives outside of the absolute value that changes whether your answer is positive or negative. And I'll give you some examples for that. Uh, so for instance, let's say we have the absolute value of negative 3, but outside we've got 1, 2, 3 negatives. How we would play this problem is, we would first off figure out what is the absolute value of negative 3. Well, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Then we go to our symbols here, and these actually just change it to the opposite of what it was. So if I use this one, it's going to change this to negative 3. If I use this one, it's going to do another opposite. It's going to change it to positive 3. And if I do this one, it's going to change it to another opposite, which is going to be back to negative 3. So I think if you have this situation where you have many um, negative symbols outside here, or many basically we're calling them opposite symbols outside here, uh, just go through and work each individual one. Now the first one's going to change it to a negative. second one's going to change it to a positive. If you have another one, it's going to do another opposite and change it back to a negative, like the example we have here. Uh, so for instance, if we have the absolute value of 4, and I've got four negative symbols on the outside of that absolute value. Um, the absolute value of four, how far is four away from zero? Well, it's just four away from zero. Now we have to go through our negative symbols here, or our opposite symbols. So the first one is going to change it to a negative. The second one is going to do the opposite of that, change it to a positive. The third one is going to do the opposite of what we have, which is going to be changing it to a negative. And then the next one is going to be the opposite of that, which is going to be changing it back to a positive. So our answer to that original problem with the four negatives on the outside is positive four. We'll do a couple more of these. All right, let's say we have the absolute value of negative two plus negative three times five. And on the outside, we've got two negative symbols we still follow order of operations for everything so we would start with negative 3 times 5 negative 3 times 5 is going to be negative 15 we're going to do everything inside the absolute value before we actually do the absolute value now if I add these two together negative 2 and negative 15 is negative 17 
Now I do the absolute value of negative 17, which is asking the question, how far is negative 17 away from 0? Negative 17 is actually 17 away from 0. Now I go to my opposite symbols. Right now my 17 is positive. Okay? That absolute value changed it to a positive amount. This negative is going to change this to the opposite, so that would be negative 17. And this negative is going to change it to the opposite, which is going to be now positive 17. So our answer to that original question would be positive 17. Oftentimes, mixed in with absolute value are just single numbers or problems in parentheses. Uh, so for example, if I take the problem, and we'll compare two of these here. So let's say we have the absolute value of negative 3, and we'll have two negative symbols on the outside. And then let's just say we have negative 3, in parentheses, with two negative signs on the outside. These are both going to play out a little differently. First of all, this absolute value sign will ask how far is negative 3 away from 0? It's 3 away from 0. This does not have an absolute value sign around it, so we're just using negative 3. If we go through the negative amounts here, this first negative is going to change this to the opposite. So the opposite of positive 3 is going to be negative 3. And then if we go for the next symbol, that will change it to the opposite, which will be positive 3. If we come over to this one right here, um, we're starting with negative 3. So the opposite of negative 3, if we use this symbol, is going to be positive 3. And then the opposite of this or the opposite of this sign, the opposite of this, is going to turn this back into negative 3. So if you, as you can see, we started with negative 3 in both cases, but because this started out in the absolute value, while this only started out in parentheses, our final answer here was positive 3, while our final answer here was negative 3. Let's do one more of those comparisons. So let's say I have the absolute value of 5 minus 3 uh, minus 5. And then just in parentheses, I have 5 minus 3 minus 5. And then let's go with 4, hopefully I can fit them all on here, 4 negative symbols outside of each one. So for starters, we're going to want to actually solve the problem on the inside. So 5 minus 3 is 2, um, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And the answer to this problem would be exactly the same, it would still be negative 3. Now the difference to start with is, this is inside of the absolute value symbols. So you're asking yourself how far is it away from 0. This is going to be 3 away from 0, so our answer changes to 3. Whereas this one was just in parentheses, so we don't need to change it at all. Now we go over to our negative symbols outside of the absolute value and outside of the parentheses. The first negative is always going to change it to the opposite of what it is. So the opposite of what we have as positive 3 is now negative 3. This is going to change it to the opposite. We start with negative 3, now we have positive 3. We go to the next symbol. We do the opposite. That would be the opposite. That would be the opposite. We go to the next symbol and do the opposite. Opposite of a positive would be a negative. Opposite of a negative would be a positive. Now we go to the very last symbol. Opposite of a negative is a positive. Opposite of a positive is a negative. So this one ended up being positive 3, while this one ended up being negative 3. At this point, I'll put four questions up here for you for some practice. If you can do these problems on your own at this point, I would just try them, pause the video, come back and check and see how you did. If you're still a little shaky on this, um, I might actually just watch the video through and see how you do. And I'm going to make the problems pretty similar uh, just so you can see the differences between them. Uh, so the first one I'll do is parenthesis 2, and then we'll put a couple of negative signs outside, and then I will do absolute value 2, and put a couple of negative signs on the outside. 
on the bottom, uh, let's do parenthesis um, negative 3 times 2. And let's go, how about we'll still do, uh, let's do three negative symbols. And then here we'll do absolute value negative 3 times 2. And we'll still do three negative symbols. Remember the absolute value symbols uh, just denote how far it is away from zero, which is always a positive amount. Every one of these negatives on the outside changes what we got for an answer to the opposite of what it was. And the absolute values work the same as the parentheses in we've still got to do everything on the inside of the parentheses or everything on the inside of the absolute value first. So if you're ready to pause this, go ahead and do that and try them. If you just want to continue listening, um, keep going with that. All right, four answers here. Parenthesis two, that's just going to stay two because it's not absolute value. We're not changing it to anything. So then we do our first negative, which would be an opposite. So the opposite of two is negative two. And then we do our second opposite, which is going to be positive two. Over here, the absolute value of two, how far is two away from zero? Well, it's two away from zero. So that would be a positive two. If I do the opposite, now it's a negative two. If I do the opposite, now it's a positive two. We got the same answer for both of those. When I come down here and solve this problem, in both cases it's negative six. The difference is, this one's just going to stay negative six because we're not in absolute value, we're just in parentheses. Here we are in absolute value, so we need to figure out how far is negative six away from zero. Well, it's just six away from zero, so we'll have to change that to six. Now we go through our negatives. Opposite of negative six is positive six. Opposite of positive six is negative six. Opposite of negative six, positive six will be our final answer there. On this side, the opposite of six, negative six. The opposite of negative six is positive six. And then finally, the opposite of positive six is negative six. So those two did not turn out to be the same answer. If you've got further questions about this, uh, please make sure that you let me know.